Father, we just come before your holy throne. We ask that you forgive us of all sins we have committed against you and against your creation. Father, I ask right now according to your word in Psalm 34, verse 7, that you can your angels around all of us participating of this broadcast, around our loved ones, family members, ministry partners, in-laws, ex-in-laws, and friends, to protect us and keep us safe from any form of retaliation or attacks of the devil and his demons. And we declare Isaiah 54, 17, no weapon formed against us shall prosper. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. And welcome, everyone, to another live edition of our Spiritual Warfare Strategic Prayer Network. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm going to take a little bit of time here to go more in details about what we are doing as a network. Amen. I'm going to be uh, talking about explaining, you know, why we are doing this, why, you know, that kind of stuff. We want people to have answers, right? Amen. Although they can call me, you know, my number is listed on brothercarlos.com, the website right there. You, if you need to talk to me, you know, go to my website. My phone number is there. You know, give me a call. Explain the nature of the call. If I don't pick up, I usually don't pick up phone calls. I wait to get the message. So because, you know, you know, I'm not going to be returning all the calls that I get. So I'm going to go and return the ones that I feel like deserve you know, some explanation or something like that, right? So I'm going to, you know, tell all of you, if you have any question concerning our spiritual warfare, strategic prayer network, you know, anything regarding w of what we do and why we have this, why we have that. But if you are interested in joining us, yes, you can call me. I'll answer, you know, the questions. Now, you know, so, but I need to explain here better because some people still have questions. Others, uh, you know, they think they might join the future, you know. So let me explain this. Okay, let me start by saying this. I was called in 1989. I got saved in 1989. Prior to that, I was a uh, top sinner, right? I love to sin, but you know, God showed mercy and saved me. And ever since my salvation, my, you know, I felt called. Immediately I felt called. Immediately. I began studying the Bible like, you know, I mean, I never liked reading books, but the Bible, I was eating the Bible. I was reading, studying every day, taking you know, several hours to read the study the Bible because I wanted to understand what Christianity was all about. I had heard about Christianity, but it was the wrong kind of Christianity, you know. You know, I needed to know the real deal. Now I felt something different in me. That's when I felt that I was called. Immediately I knew I was called. Now, called to do what? Everybody is called to preach the gospel. What is to preach the gospel? Well, to share Jesus to people, right? That's preaching the gospel. You know, if you don't know how to preach the gospel, like a, you know, like a, a, a pastor that went to Bible college and then seminary, you know, they can, you know, talk way more than just salvation. But, you know, friends, when I got saved, all I wanted to do was to let people know about Jesus. I didn't want to know anything else other than that. I didn't want to do anything else other than that. I started with my family. They all rejected me. Okay, they all rejected me. They didn't want to hear anything about my religion. That's okay. They rejected me. I went elsewhere. Then I went to the streets. I went to bus stations. You know, I went and then finally I was invited to preach at a radio station. Some people heard me preach. In, in, in like uh, in in uh, in like uh, seminars, a particular leader in my hometown in Brazil heard me talk, you know, and preaching and getting people saved. He said, "Oh, 
I have a spot for you in my radio station. Man, there I was preaching in his radio station that was the number one in town. I'm talking about Christian radio station, the number one, that one was. There I was preaching twice, sometimes three times a week, and I didn't have to pay for air, nothing. So then people start hearing me talk fervently about salvation. They wanted to meet me in person. Now they wanted to come to church to see me, that kind of stuff. I'm talking about 35 years ago. Then, of course, then once I learned more, then you kind of know where God is leading you. Then you got to know, you, you, you start knowing the nature of your calling and whatever else God wants you to do. So back in the days, I started casting out demons too, 35 years ago. One woman, the first one was a woman. We were in a seminar. You know, I was helping there. But and then we had lunch break, you know, like a, yeah, like a lunch break. And then I was walking to the restroom. And then this woman approached me and, and she stood in front of me. I said, how can I help you? She didn't say a word. She began punching me. I said, wow. Then I had read in the Bible that Jesus drove out demons. You know, I said, wow, I think this woman has a demon. Let me try. I stretched my hand toward her and I commanded the demon to come out. She fell backwards, motionless. I thought I had killed the woman. And then two friends came. They had more experience than I had. And then they ended up casting out more demons. She got up and walked away. Walked away. That was my first encounter with demons. You know, me casting them out, right? I grew up with demons inside myself. So I'm just saying, you know, I had an experience driving out demons. So then I felt, you know, that God was leading me more to deal in this area because that I, I felt so good driving out a demon. Man, I felt good. I was so happy that I was able to cast out a demon from that woman. You know, so much so that she got up and walked away. She stopped punching me. So it gave, it gave me joy. Now, you talk about somebody that has joy in his heart when he drives out demons. That's me. But I also understand that 99% of Christians don't want to deal with this in this area. They don't. I've been to so many churches over the years, and I barely heard pastors saying, come out, demon, maybe one or two churches among, who knows, maybe thousands of churches that I've been to over the years. I've been to so many churches, folks, probably more than a thousand. I don't know. You know, I used to go to visit church just to go and get to know different, you know, anointing, that kind of stuff. You know, 1%, you know, dealt with evil spirits. But even that, they didn't go deep. You know, it, 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 it one, you know, drive out a demon here, drive out a demon there, one sabant. Well, I said, no, I need more than that. I need to see more stuff than that. So then I felt in my heart that God was leading me to deal in particularly in the area of demonic possession because Jesus dealt in this area. Paul the apostle drove out demons. Okay, uh, some of the apostles, the, the, the disciples had experience with that as well. So that led me, you know, to do what I did to start my YouTube channel. You know, back in 2011, that's when I started the YouTube. Uh, no, no, actually, I started in 20, 2007, 2007. But I, I had uploaded only a few videos back in the days. It took me like a three or four years to really start uploading videos daily. So that's when I started doing live streaming. It was back in 2011. The end, I would say probably like a... At the very end of 2011 to the beginning of 2012, that's when I really started. I saw the potential. I said, you know, I want to start recording videos, driving out demons on YouTube. Some of you know that I have videos there that are 12 years old, 13, that kind of stuff. Why? Because 
that's what I did. My desire to drive out demons was so intense that I, I thought that recording videos driving out demons, I was going to help people. And in fact, I did. Agnostics will send me mails thanking me, you know, for helping them become Christians. Uh, atheists getting healed of incurable diseases writing to me only by watching my videos back in the days. So now you know why I have a passion for what I do. I do not expect you to have the same passion because I feel like I'm called for this. How many people d loves driving out demons? Not many. Probably less than 1% of the population. Maybe, uh, you know, way less than 1%. You know, because I know some of you watching me here right now, you don't like driving out demons. You don't want to even mention that. And I don't blame you. Okay, some people, they just don't like to do it. That's when I come in. Okay, so I drive out demons from people all the time on the phone. Uh, they, some want to meet me in person. When I can meet people in person, I do. But, uh, you know, but since I minister mainly, you know, everywhere, you know, like uh, Australia sometimes, uh, uh, UK, you know, but those are rare me calling. I love to call US and Canada because, you know, it's closer. You know, I understand their English. They understand mine. You know, I have a hard time understanding UK accent and also Australian accent. I do. I do. I don't, I don't understand them well. So then, because of that, I focus mainly in the US and Canada. You know, but every once in a while, I get on the call with somebody overseas. Now, uh, let me say this to you. I'm still available to drive out demons over the phone. I love to do it. All we have to do is schedule a time. And I want to make sure you are serious about getting free from demons because some people want to play games only. You know, they just want to play games. You know, I, I don't have time for that. So I am available to speak with people to try to understand their problems. And if I see that I can help them, I will definitely, you know, jump on a call and we can do it. Right? Right now I'm helping people from Canada. Uh, you know, I have a, a, a few appointments you know, for the rest of the week and weekend because I came across people that felt they needed help. And after talking to them, I realized that they're serious about becoming free. They're not just playing games. So then I'm going to do what I can to help them. Now, talking about our spiritual warfare strategic prayer network. I'm, I'm a warrior. Okay. I love driving out demons. And when I first heard about the spiritual warfare ministries, that was back in 20, 2000, and 2000 or 19, 1999. Maybe even, no, 1998. That's when I first heard about spiritual warfare ministries. It was 1998. I went to Argentina in 1997 helping them. But back in the days, they, they didn't call it spiritual warfare ministry they call it something else you know so but i i went to argentina i was invited to go there to help that was in 1997 then 1998 then at the end of 97 i was invited to come to the u.s by a ministry that i helped you know in argentina so i came they brought me and then i started working in the u.s in 19 at the end of 1997 you know, and then 1998, uh, and then I remember in 2000, they had a spiritual warfare uh, conference in Dallas, Texas, led by Peter Wagner. So he's already pa he already passed away, but uh, I was invited to go there. I went, 10,000 people in the arena, 10,000 people in Dallas, Texas. So it was only about the spiritual warfare, and I was asked to go there to help, not to preach, not to teach, to help. There I was among 10,000 people, okay, and helping, you know, as much as I could. So that was basically, that conference in 2000 turned me on to the spiritual warfare 
kind of ministry. It turned me on. I saw so much need for it. But you know, and then, you know, so then you keep going on with your life and then you have to work. And I, I started selling cars in 1997. I was a car salesperson for 13 years, you know, but I wasn't full time in ministry like I am now. But, you know, I started, I felt the fire. I felt the calling. I felt the vision. And one thing that I learned way back was that people were being tormented by evil spirits everywhere I went. I was invited to preach in several churches. Everywhere I went, I saw people tormented by evil spirits. Everywhere. I'm talking about in America. And then I went, of course, I traveled to China, to Hong Kong. In 1997, I saw the same thing. I even cast out demons there. Then in 2005, I went back to Asia, to Taiwan. Same thing. People manifested, and I drove their demons out. So I went to Argentina. I saw demon-possessed people. So in other words, it doesn't matter where you go on the planet. There are demon-possessed people everywhere you go, and they will manifest. Some will manifest. But you know, over the years, I learned more about human behaviors, human belief systems, that kind of stuff. That brought me to a conclusion that 99% of people are driven by demons. Only 99% of the population. They may not be heavily possessed, but they are driven by demons. What do I mean by that? They they are driven by compulsive thinking or thoughts. Compulsive thoughts can be demonic voices speaking into someone's brain, telling them to do something evil, okay? And then they go ahead and do it, right? They go ahead and do it. Why? Because they heard a voice. They thought it was their own. But, you know, I learned over the years that demons speak through their mind. They whisper into people's minds and it comes across as thoughts. That's why people do stupid things all the time, right? Because they're hearing, they're listening to demons. But some of them don't know that, you know. They don't know that they're listening to demons. That's why they do what they do. But uh, then I learned from the Bible that demons were cast down to the earth from heaven. And here they are. They are infesting the planet. It doesn't matter where you go, there they are. Now, what is that that they do to people? They put sickness inside them. They torment them mentally, emotionally, psychologically. You name it. They are tormentors. They know how to torment people. They cannot break in. They have to be brought in or be invited in. So that's why they talk people into opening the doors for them. All right. So I'm just trying to explain to you why I do this and why we are heading somewhere. Okay. So basically, I became more active with the spiritual warfare in 2012. When I first started my live streamings, I began driving out demons. I began breaking curses. I began doing this kind of stuff. People were getting reactions, some positive reactions. You know, even to these days, they follow me because they got set free from evil spirits, right? And for also from curses and from diseases, from sickness, that kind of stuff. So, and then... We started the spiritual, our spiritual warfare strategic prayer network on YouTube back in 2012. I don't remember exactly the, the month, but we started in 2012, maybe towards the end of 2012, but we started back in the days. Then people start getting excited. That's when I start recording house cleansing videos. That's when I started recording neighborhood cleansing videos. People played them even to this day. And, and some report to me that they see change. Of course, there's change. If you do something, if you drive out demons from your neighborhood, they have to go. I already shared this here before that when I moved to where I live here, you know, in 2011, I talked to the maintenance guy here. He told me that there were Satanists sacrificing cats in this complex. I said, that got to stop. Then I did, I did my thing and then it stopped. They went away. They went elsewhere. Never again 
I heard about Satanists dry, you know, sacrificing cats in this complex. After I did my thing. What is my thing? Driving out demons, folks. Driving out demons and breaking curses. That's how you're going to get victory. So then, you know, I, that changed the spiritual atmosphere over my area. Let me say that again. My prayers in this complex and around here changed the spiritual atmosphere over my area here. Okay, my area. Why? Because back in the days, there were so much crimes taking place around this area. Now, now it, there's still some, but not as bad like what it used to be. Now, you tell me. If you start putting Dimas to run in your, you know, from your zip code area, if that's not going to work, it, it, it will work. I have changed it through my driving out of demons here. I, I tell you that I have because, you know, who else would do something like this? Police officers? No. No, they don't. Pastors? No, they don't. They care less. Somebody got to do it. Okay, I'm, I drive around my neighborhood, I drive around my zip code area, and I put Dimas to run. Definitely, it has to change. Back in the days, I used to hear about people getting run over by cars, you know, regularly in these streets corner, corners around here. Not anymore, folks. It might happen like one in, in a very while, but that's okay. But before, it used to be frequent accidents. Not anymore, folks. Things have gotten better spiritually over my spiritual jurisdiction. I claim my spiritual jurisdiction for Christ. Okay? I drive out demons here. I walk around. I drive around driving out demons, folks. These devils have to go. They go elsewhere. They got to go elsewhere, not here. Okay? So... I would say to you, the spiritual atmosphere over my zip code area has changed from negative to positive. All right. So now you need to understand this. I invite people to join us, but I don't force them to join us, right? Have I ever forced you to join me? Have I gone to your house and grabbed you by your hair and I said, okay, come over here. You got to join my network here right now, right now, right now. Have I done that to you? No. Huh? So people join. I invite people. But, you know, they join if they want. I tell them benefits for joining because I have experienced benefits myself. I used to be sick. I used to be mentally ill. Not anymore. I don't have pain in my body. Not anymore, folks. Not anymore. Why? Because I drive out demons. Today I spoke with a lady in Canada. And she might be listening to me here right now because she is always listening to me. So she told me she went to see a doctor because she had some bleeding in the female parts. She felt that to be unusual. You know, it wasn't the period, it wasn't out of that er the period area. Well, she decided to go to see a doctor. Well, immediately after running some tests, he said to her, well, we need to remove your uterus. We need to remove your uterus. That's what he told her. She said she, she was afraid. She, she got fearful. She said, what have you found here inside me? He said, well, it doesn't look good. Okay, the safest thing we can do is to remove it. She said, we were talking on the phone today, this afternoon. Okay, then she said, well, okay, I got to think about it. Then she went home and said, you know, I better go to see another doctor. But I'm not going to tell him or her what this one told me. So then she went to another doctor. And then she did the same kind of exams, you know, tests. And then she said that it was a man, a, a male doctor. And then... She said, what have you found in me? I mean, is there anything to be concerned about? Look what he said. Nah, not really. It's just, you know, like a common, something common to women. It's a little bleeding here, a little bleeding there, but I don't see anything major. Now, look, 
one wanted to remove the part. The second one said, no, there's nothing major here. It can be treated through medication. Then she decided to go to a third one, which was a female, without telling them what they, well, telling her what they told him, that, that, that told her that the other two. Well, then she said, well, she did, she did the test too. And then she said, well, I, I, don't, I don't see anything major. That's what she said, like the second guy. I don't see anything major, but you know, we never know. You know, there might be something there. So maybe we need to do a more like a blood test or something like that to see if there's anything there. But, uh, and then she said, well, I need to tell you, doctor, that the first doctor that I went to wanted to remove my uterus. Look what the second, look what she told her. Well, then you better go back to him. Let him do the work. You better go back to him and let him do the work. Look what she told. Does it sound like a doctor to you? Not to me. Now, let me say, let me say something here to you because it bothers me. How many people go to doctors, okay, and they are told that they have something major when they have nothing major? It happens all the time, folks, okay? It happens all the time. I don't trust medical science. I don't. I'd rather die, okay? I remember, I think it was in Chicago, like a three years ago, three, four years ago. Some of you might remember that. There was a doctor there prescribing uh, uh, chemotherapy to patients that were totally healthy. But he was still prescribing chemotherapy to them. Why? Corruption. Okay, fraud. Money. They want money. They want money. If they have to remove a portion of your body, you know, you're going to believe them, right? Americans believe doctors just like more than they believe God. If a doctor said so, if a doctor said so, that's the way it is. That's the belief system in America. Okay? They believe in medical science more than be they believe in God. They, they actually don't believe in God when it comes to sickness and disease. They don't. Because Psalm 103 verse 3 says, He heals all your diseases, but you don't believe that. You're still going to go to medical science, right? Because that's how you've been brainwashed since, ch since childhood. You have been brainwashed to believe in medical science, right? So that's why you go. Now, let me say this to you. Let me ask you a question. We don't have many people here, but more people are going to be watching this video because it's being recorded to you too. So how many of you here have been raped by medical science? I would say to you that 30% of the adult population, you know, maybe the, the getting, you know, after 50s, let, let's say that maybe after 50. Or maybe after 40, 40 years old, you know, something like that. You know, how many in general? I'm just going I'm, to, I, I have not done a research on this. I'm just going to tell you what I believe that has been happening. Okay. So uh, I would say that at least 30% of the adult population over 40, 45 have been raped by medical science. They have undergone surgeries that they did not need to have. The problem could have been fixed other way. Like a doctor from Canada. They wanted to do a, a, a knee replacement on her. Her specialist, I'm talking about a physician, a doctor that called me. She had so much pain in her knee that her specialist wanted to do a knee replacement. But before she said... Yes, she called me, and we were able to get the demon out, so her knee went back to normal without surgery. I'm talking about a physician, a doctor, okay? Then she didn't need to do knee replacement, and she also knew that it was a bad decision to do that because it never gets healed. Just like hip replacement, it only gets worse, but doctors make money. Okay, medical science is a money-making machine. They are about money. They care less for you. They want your money. They want the insurance money. That's why they have fancy hospitals. Okay, so I would say to you that in America only, at least 
of the population over 40, 45, something like that, maybe over 40, have been raped by medical science. Okay, they have been forced to take medication they did not need. They have been forced to undergo surger surgeries they did not need. Okay, but because they listen to doctors more than they listen to God, you know, they, 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 uh, you know, they, they, they believe in doctors. Okay, they believe, they don't believe in Jesus like they believe in doctors. They believe in, that's why doctors say, well, we got to replace your, your, you know, we got to replace something in your body. Let's do it. Oh, yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. Oh, you, you're not going to pay. The insurance will pay. You don't have to work. Let's fix that. No, it doesn't fix. Everybody that I have talked to that have undergone surgeries, they all reported that it did not heal them. In some cases, it got much worse. Now, go figure that out. Now, you know why we have a spiritual warfare strategic prayer network, don't you? We drive out demons. I have driven out cancer demons, okay, several times. Other killers, too, such as hepatitis B, you know, and a bunch of other stuff, including colon cancer. Well, they went. Why? Because they were demons. I have interviewed cancer already. Why? Because they are demons. They're going to talk to me. I'm going to force them to talk to me. Okay? I have done it. So, um, so the reason I'm saying this is this. We have a spiritual warfare strategic prayer network to educate people. Okay? To help people believe God more than they believe medical science. They need to have the understanding that demons can put cancer inside their bodies. Demons can twist their spines. Demons can put bulge disc inside somebody's spine and herniate a disc. Demons have the ability to do, but because they don't see demons, they don't believe. They think that I, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm a lunatic. Well, he talks too much about demons, you know. Something is not right. Well, listen, I'm the one getting older and healthier, not you. You are getting older and sicker. That's you. Why? Because you, you are quick to hate. You are quick to harbor anger. Anything can get you angry. Anything. If I don't answer your phone call, you can get angry. You can get angry because Brother Carter didn't answer my call. He didn't call me back. Now I'm angry. Why? Because you listen to demons. Because you don't know any better. You and your doctors don't know any better. Both of you don't know any better. That's why they call me. When they get in serious, serious trouble out there, I'm talking about doctors, they call me. They call me because they, they feel like I have answers you know, when they don't, you know, every once in a while I get calls from doctors, every once in a while, I'm here, ready to answer their questions and ready to educate them. Now, we have a spiritual warfare strategic prayer network in place. I say this here every day that we enter the spiritual realm and we put demons to run there. Some people, they don't understand that. They think that I have to call them to drive out their demons. They think they have to be in a meeting with me and other people in order for their demons to be cast out. No, it does not have to be done in that fashion, okay? I enter the spiritual realm every day, several times a day, and I put demons to run there. And you don't have to be with me, and I don't have to be with you, all right? Forget about that. That's, that's the wrong way of thinking because you joined my network now you feel like that i am obligated to give you a call from time to time no i am not no i am not i don't mind talking to you if you have questions i don't mind but it's not gonna be every day it's not gonna be every week it's not gonna be every month it's gonna be once in a while okay i know what i'm doing okay i have encountered more demons in my walk with Christ and have overcome most of them more than all the church all combined all together in your city or perhaps even in your state all right 
So we have a spiritual warfare strategic prayer network here to help people gain understanding. And obviously, we want to put their devils to run. Because if we don't put your demons to run, they're going to end up killing you. They're going to end up driving you to a doctor that is going to remove your liver and then put another liver there from a dead person only to put more demons inside you because that will not fix the problem. Blood transf transfusion will not fix the problem. It will make the situation worse because it brought more demons into you, demons from the dead person. A heart transplant will not fix your problem. It's going to bring more demons into you, the ones that you have, plus the ones that came from the dead person through the heart. Now you're going to have way more demons and you're going to suffer more. Aren't you fed up of being raped by medical science? Aren't you fed up? Okay. Amen. It's a sin to trust medical science more than God. It's a sin. Now, I need to answer this, and I hope people listen to this whole video on YouTube when they find it on YouTube, okay? We have a purpose. We have a calling, and we have a mission, okay? I don't have to grab you by your hands, and that's one thing that I don't like to do at all. I don't like grabbing people by their hands and guiding them like that. I hate that. I don't like it, okay? I'll tell you what it is and how it is, and you make up your mind whether you want to follow or not. And you need to take action too. Today I noticed that three people signed up for our spiritual uh, uh, nation presidents. I'm going to talk a little bit about that now. Okay? So our main goal, our main focus on, on our spiritual warfare strategy network is to help you, you know, grow older and healthier, okay? And also, we are here to drive out your demons, even if it's long distance. Eventually, we'll get them out of you. But you got to be willing to be set free. You got to let the anger demon go, okay? You got to be forgiving. You got to be loving. You got to forgive people every day. Otherwise, the demons will not leave you, okay? So now, so... Uh, let me say this, the main goal for our spiritual warfare strategic prayer network is to help you and your family and your home, your entire household, okay, to get better, to feel better, to be more positive, and how do we do that? By driving out your demons long distance. I don't have to call you to get your demons. You signed up, I can get your demons. Once you signed up, then you are giving me and us, the, you know, uh, as a network, you are giving us, you know, ground, legal ground to represent you before Satan's kingdom. And that's exactly what we're going to do. Okay, we're going to stand your ground. We're going to stand in the background. We're going to enter the spiritual realm on your behalf, on behalf of your family, on behalf of your household. And we are going to put those devils to run. Eventually, things are going to start getting better, even if it's going to be a slow process. But the goal is for you to start feeling better if you are willing to cooperate. Okay, you have to listen to me right here. Okay, amen. And, okay, you have to be willing to let the devils go because some people are in love with their demons. They simply don't let the devils go. If you love your devils, I cannot cast them out. Not even Jesus can cast them out if you love them. If you love them, keep them. Okay. But if you hate them, we'll take care of that as a network. That's why our network is growing. <coughs> Excuse me. Our network is growing. We are growing because right now we are more serious about this. Right now, I want to dedicate more time and energy and prayer towards our goals here. Now we want this spiritual warfare to become a worldwide network. And believe me, even famous people are coming to join us. Even famous people, I'm talking about celebrities, okay? Not many, one or two, maybe two. Okay, yeah, that's okay. You know, we, we, I, I, 
you know, just come. Celebrities, just come. Okay, we want to help you too, right? So here's the thing. That is our primary goal, is to focus on you, your family, and your household. Now, what is that that I came up with, which is new here for you, but I did it back in the, in the you know, 1997, 1998. I was already doing this. What I'm going to tell you next. I belong to a ministry that's exactly what they did. They went to cities and drove out demons from cities. Back in the days, I started in 1997 in Argentina. Do you think that when I told you about the spiritual uh, lighthouses, the spiritual city mayor, did you think that there was something new that came out from my brain like uh, overnight? No. I implemented this in 1997, 1998, 1999, and 2000. As long as I stayed with that ministry, we were working on this, you know, system. Okay, then I left them, the, you know, because, you know, I felt God was leading me elsewhere. Then I left them. That's okay. But when I tell you about spiritual lighthouses, that's not something new. That is actually something old. I have already implemented that, and we've seen change. We have seen change. Newark in New York was one of the cities that we saw major change. Okay, Yuba City in California was another city that we saw major change, positive change. After we did, Stockton too. Okay, Stockton too. Okay, Amen. Now let me tell you what is here for you, but also keep in mind, I'm not forcing you to join me. If you join me, it's because you chose to do it. Okay? Don't blame me for you being here. Don't blame me. Okay? Now let me say this to you. What is that that we have here for you? And by the way, I was, I was saying this. We are going to drive out demons here, okay? Don't go anywhere. I'm going to drive out demons. We're going to end this, this broadcast driving out demons. Today, we had three signed ups, all for spiritual nation presidents. One from the U.S., one from Kenya, and one from Canada. Okay, and I have more people in Canada that might be joining us shortly here. Okay, as well as from the US. I will not say from Kenya because those are rare sign ups. Okay, amen. But it happened today. Now we have a representative in Kenya. Okay, why do I offer, why do we as a network offer spiritual lighthouses, spiritual city mayors? spiritual uh, state governors and spiritual nation uh, presidents. Why? I have said that here in another video, but I'm going to repeat here, okay? It's the anointing. It's for legal. It's for spiritual legal jurisdiction purposes, okay? Let me say, let me focus now on lighthouses, you know, I encourage people to join us as, at least, as spiritual lighthouses. Why? Because if you become a spiritual lighthouse, a lighthouse, your home will be protected. Your neighborhood, we're going to do in your neighborhood what I did in my neighborhood. Okay, we're going to change the spiritual atmosphere there from evil to good. From, from, from bad, you know, from negative to positive. It might take a little time, but it can be done. All we need is you there. You are representing your zip code area and get, granting us your spiritual uh, uh, legal jurisdiction there so we can enter your zip code spiritually. I didn't say physically. I didn't say I'm going to drive there. No, it's all done spiritually. For me to go to your zip code, all I need is to enter the spiritual realm, and I am there. I am there. I'm 10,000 miles away, but I'm there because I enter the spiritual realm. That's the beauty of the spiritual realm. It grants me you know, instant access to any parts of the world that I need to be. 
I'm talking about it spiritually. There's a scripture that Paul said. The, the, I, I, I don't remember which one. I'll tell you what it is. You might look it on Google and you find out. I'm not going to look for that scripture right now, but I'm going to tell you exactly what it is. Approximately what it is. Paul was away. You know, he was in another city preaching. And then some people pray that they gather together in prayer, okay, for the church. That's what we do here. But they did it for the church. And then Paul wrote them a letter, you know, that they were gathering together several times, maybe like once a week, I don't know, you know, for a period of time. So Paul heard about it. And then Paul wrote them a letter saying, I was not there physically, but I was there in his spirit. He said, I was not there physically. <coughs> because physically, I was far away. But I was there in his spirit. Now, did he lie when he said that? No. He was, in fact, there in his spirit. Right? Right. When I say that we're going to fight for you in your neighborhood, I'm talking about you spiritually, okay? You don't have to see my face. You don't have to hear my voice on the phone. We do it daily, spiritually, okay? That's why I know that your zip code is going to get better. I know it. That's why we encourage people to become lighthouses in their zip code area. You, you, you don't want to see somebody driving by, you know, driving by and shooting you, right? Right? You don't want to, you know, hear about somebody in your home being abducted in your neighborhood. That would be a bad news, right? Well, then do something about it. Because demons drive people to shoot others. Demons drive people to abduct people. Demons drive people to become violent in a certain area. Demons are behind that. What is that that we do? Do we kick the criminals out of there physically? No. We put their demons to run. Now their demons are going to take them with them. Because they are forced to go, now they're going to take the criminals with them because they need to use them. They're going to use them elsewhere. Okay. I've done that in my own neighborhood. That's why the criminality here went down drastically. Drastically. Because I did that. Now the demons have to go. They're going to take their recipients with them. That's why, you know, my neighborhood now is better than what it used to be. No, so in your neighborhood, it will be the same. Now, it all boils down to this. How bad do you want your neighborhood to be a peaceful zip code area. You know, less crimes, less drugs act act drug activities, less prostitution, less loud cars playing hip-hop music there, right? Well, folks, join us. That's what we do. We put criminal demons to run, and then they're going to take their criminals with them. I've seen it over and over and over again. That's what I do. Now, on top of that, you know, we also offer a spiritual city mayor anointing. This is anointing. This is not an office. Like a, you became a mayor there. Now you're going to kick the other one out of his lawn. That's This is an anointing. And you don't have to do anything other than just live there and sign up, of course. You know, we'll do the dirty work. We'll, we'll put the devils to run. All we need is you there. Right? Now, once that you sign up for a city mayor, okay, then you are granting us a spiritual, okay, a legal jurisdiction over that city. That's what we did in Stockton. That's what we did in Newark, in New York, that area right there. That's what we, needed, we did in Yuba City. That's what, what we did in Argentina, the whole nation of Argentina. We did that there. For the whole nation of Argentina, we did that there. That's why I believe in someone becoming an anointed, an anointing, okay? You know, a nation president. So now we also offer a spiritual state governor. Why? Because states also get messed up with crimes. Look at Florida, right? So hurricanes, okay? 
So uh, one thing that I paid attention since Sarah Huckabee, since Sarah Huckabee became governor of uh, what's that uh, uh, Arkansas, they started having way less tornadoes. Before she became governor, they had tornadoes there by the hundreds every year. Not anymore. Not anymore. What is that 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 woman brought to Arkansas? Well, she's a believer. She believes in Jesus. And she's not signing any wicked laws in that state. Now, you tell me, folks, that uh, spiritual things don't work over cities and states and nations. I saw the transformation in Argentina firsthand because I was there. Argentina is a country. It's a nation. Okay. So here's the thing. We also offer a spiritual state governor anointing. If you want to sign up, you don't have to fight the devils there. We'll do it for you. Okay. But if you want to fight the devils there, more power to you. Cast them out. Demons have to be cast out. Stop praying for demons. Okay. Cast them out. All right. Prayer does not cast out demons. You have to cast them out. Now, there's another anointing here, which is we had three sign-ups today. One in Canada, one in the U.S., and one in Kenya. It's called anointing a, spirit, I mean, a spiritual uh, uh, nation president. What does that do? Same thing. We are now going to work on a, on a, a nationwide level. Okay, can we transform the US, USA overnight? No. Can we transform the USA in a year? I don't think so. But you know, folks, we got to start somewhere. We're going we're gonna to start in the regions where the people si signing up signed up. They live in that particular region, outside the state. That's okay. West Coast, East Coast, Central, right? We can start working there. And then little by little, the, the laws are going to change. You know, there will be more you know, godly laws. There will be more respect for life. That kind of stuff. It can happen. It happened in Argentina. Why can't it happen here? So that's what I'm saying. You know, the more nation presidents we have over one nation, the better. More power to us. More power to us. You know, right now we have what? Two in the U.S. Okay. One in Canada, one in Kenya. Okay, well, we are getting somewhere here, right? I love to have at least 100 in the U.S. The more, the better. The more representatives we have in this nation, the more power to us. And you don't even have to drive out demons. All we need is you there to grant us a spiritual jurisdiction. And one thing that I've been doing for 35 years, or at least close to that, you know, at least since 1997, is entering the spiritual realm and fighting there. I do it. I do. Paul did. You know, Paul was doing that all the time. He said more than one time, I was there in his spirit. Okay, I don't know how many times, maybe two or three times it's in the Bible. But, you know, why did he say that? Because he was there in his spirit. <clears throat> I can be right now in China in his spirit if I want to. Okay, I was today in Kenya because we had a sign up there. I was there spiritually today. In his spirit, I went to Kenya. Folks, that's what we do. Okay, the, the reason people have a hard time understanding this is because they live in a physical world. They only believe what they can see. That's why they don't believe in coronavirus, because they cannot see, right? So, in the spiritual realm, things are even more powerful than they are here. Okay? So once I enter the spiritual realm, I have more power than when I am down here. That's why I fight there. That's why I put the must run there. I like to congratulate all the three nation, spiritual nation presidents that we had today. 
I'd like to congratulate you and I hope to have more soon, okay? But I also noticed that we have more people signing up as spiritual uh, lighthouses, okay? Amen? We have more people signing up as spiritual lighthouses. I would say to them, if that's all you want to be, great. We need you there anyways. We want to clean up your neighborhood. It doesn't matter how bad it is right now. It can be cleaned up by the power of God. Remember that verse that says, If the Lord does not build the house, they labor in vain who build it. Now, listen to this now. If the Lord does not guard the city, the city, the, the watchmen stay awake in vain. Let me repeat that part. Okay. If the Lord does not guard the city, the police officers will stay awake in vain. One more time. If the Lord does not guard your city, the police officers will be spinning their wheels. It's a psalm. It's in the word of God. If the Lord does not build the house, they labor in vain who build it. If the Lord does not guard the city, the watchmen stay awake in vain. Now go figure that out. When we enter the spiritual realm and we are driving out demons right in your neighborhood, don't you think that that's God's will for your neighborhood? Don't you think that God wants to heal your neighborhood? Think about it. Don't you think that God wants more peace in that neighborhood? Of course. So God is fighting for us as we drive out demons from that neighborhood. I don't have to go there physically. I go there spiritually and guess who's already there waiting for me? God. G-O-D. God. Jesus Christ. Okay. When I get there, Jesus is already there waiting for me. Are you going to join us or not? Let's drive out demons right now, folks. This is a win-win situation for the people that are joining us. More power to you. More prayers going your way. More demons driven out from you, your house, your neighborhood, your city, your state, and your nation. All right? These devils cannot hurt you. Okay? That's why you got to quit getting angry. Okay, quit getting angry. All right, be loving and kind. Okay, amen. So repeat after me right now. We're going to drive out a few demons here, then we'll, we'll finish the broadcast. But I needed to explain this more in details because I have a feeling that more people are going to be signing up, more signing up. It's going to be practically impossible for me to be explaining everything. Everything that I just said here to each individual, right? It is better for me to explain right here in a, in a setting that more people are going to be watching than calling each individual and spending half an hour with them explaining this. That is one thing that I don't want to do. Okay? Now, keep in mind, <clears throat> I'm not forcing you to join. You join because you want. But once you join, Okay, then yes, we're going to work for you on your behalf, on behalf of your family, on behalf of your home, on behalf of your life. Okay, that's what we do daily, live here and offline in the spiritual realm. Every day. We want to make sure demons are driven away from you and from your home and from your city, and from your state, and from your neighborhood, and from your nation. Praise God. All right. <clears throat> Repeat after me now. <clears throat> Say, Father in heaven, um, I forgive everyone that has ever hurt me one way or another. Father, I, love, I, I forgive them. I love them. I bless them. And I pray for them. Bless them, Father. Provide for them, Father. Heal them, Father. Now, Father, I ask that you forgive me of all my sins as I have forgiven those who have trespassed 
against me. In Jesus' mighty name. One more thing I want to say here, okay? For the, for the families that have joined us here to our Spiritual Warfare Strategy Network, we pray here live as well. Now, I'm not going to be praying for the zip code, city, state, and nation live yet. Not live yet. But in the spiritual realm, every day. Every day. Several times a day. Live, not yet. Why? Let me answer you why. Because I am thinking about starting another live streaming just for that purpose. I'm thinking. I might start one tomorrow. I might start one next week. Okay? It might be in the morning. I don't know. I'm thinking about running one live streaming, even if it's going to be only for 10 or 15 minutes, just to cover that part. Okay? Amen? So, I don't know if I'm going to do it. I feel like I will. Okay? I just need to pray a little bit more about it. So, but that part, we are taking care of that every day in the spiritual realm. Now, the live streaming here are for those who have signed up to be under our spiritual warfare strategic prayer covering, covering for their families, for themselves, for their businesses, and for their household. Not for their zip code, for their household. The zip code is another broadcast, pretty soon, I believe. All right. Let's drive out demons right now. The Bible says in the book of Luke, chapter 10, verse 19, I have given you authority to trample on snakes and scorpions and to overcome all the power of the enemy and not to harm you. Come out, every spirits. Get out of everyone who has signed up for our spiritual warfare strategic prayer network. Get out of them. Get out of their family members. Get out of the entire household. Get out of uh, <coughs> their pets. Get out of their automobiles and transportations. Lose their money. Lose their finances. Get out of them. Come out, infirmity, sickness, and disease. Get out, pain. Come out now, cancer. Get out of them, cancer. Get out now, arthritis. Get out now, fibromyalgia. Get out now, mental illness, mental torment, depression. Get out, suicidal thoughts. Get out, panic attacks. Get out, nightmares. Get out, obesity. Get out now, sleeping disorder, eating disorder. Get out and go straight to the abyss. Come out of everyone who has signed up for our spiritual warfare strategic prayer network. Get out of them. Get out of their family members. Get out of the entire household. Get out of me also, evil spirits. Get out of my entire household. Get out of my pets. Get out of my sons. Get out of my grandchildren. Get out of all my descendants. Get out of their family members. Lose our money. Lose our finances. Get out of our uh, uh, automobiles and transportations. Go now to the pit. Go now to the pit. Go now to the pit. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. Get out now. Come out now. Come out now. Pain, come out now. Come out now. Criminal demons, get out. Get out of us. Go to the pit. Come out now. Premature death. Accidents. Get out now. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. Get out. Get out of our members. Get out. Get out. Get out of my ministry partners. Get out. Get out of me and my descendants. Get out. In Jesus' mighty name, get out. Get out of our entire households. Get out. Go now to the pit. Come out, evil spirits. Go now to the pit. Come out now. Come out now. Come out now. Come out now. Go to the abyss. Go to the abyss. Get out. In Jesus' mighty name. Come out. In Jesus' mighty name. Go now to the pit. Go now to the pit. Go now to the pit in Jesus' mighty name. Take a deep breath three times, everybody. In Jesus' mighty name, come out. Come out. Come out. Come out, evil spirits. Get out of us. Infirmity, sickness, and disease. Get out of us and go straight to the abyss. In Jesus' mighty name. Let me say one more thing here. I saw on the news today that the U.S. hospitals are running out of IV fluids. They are running out of IV fluids. There's a shortness 
okay, of IV fluids. Is that bad news or good news? I heard some of you say bad news. Well, let me tell you what it is. It is good news. It is good news. The less you depend on uh, medical science, the better. You need to learn to depend on God. You need to learn to depend on God. He is the one that heals all your diseases. All right. Now, let me say another bad news here. For some of you, this is bad news. The U.S. eventually will run out of hospital beds. They cannot build enough hospitals to treat the kind of sickness and viruses that we have in the U.S. right now. Okay, which it's not just COVID-19 anymore. There, there are a bunch of other kind of viruses that are eating up people alive right now as I speak in the U.S. Eventually, there will be no more hospital beds for people in the USA. Is that bad news or good news? That is good news. Why? Because people will learn to depend more on God. Now they're going to have to put their faith in God rather than in medical science. That is good news. That is good news. A thousand may fall at your side, ten thousand at your right hand, but it will not come near you. It's good news that we are running out of hospital beds. It is good news that there's a shortage of IV fluids. Okay? The bad news is demons will kill people faster. For those that are possessed by demons and put their trust in medical science and don't know Jesus. That is unfortunate. But for others, they're going to learn to believe in God wholeheartedly. They're going to have to. Okay, amen. That's it. Let me pray a final prayer right now, folks. Thank you so much for listening to this whole video. We've been here for longer than an hour, but I had to say this. If you got here late, this video is being recorded to YouTube and will be, will be live the whole thing. Listen to this whole video. Now, folks, also one more thing here. Please send us a donation. I was not able to raise all the money that I needed. I even made a trip to Los Angeles trying to raise money there without success. Somebody said he was going to give me some money. When I got there, his cell phone was turned off. I could not get hold of him. I drove eight hours, four hours to go, four hours to come back for nothing. I even spent money that I could not have spent. But you know, I trusted the person. Okay, that's why I went there. Now, listen, uh, you know, consider sowing a financial blessing to help us, folks. Okay, I'm still way short of the amount that I needed for today. But now I'm going to have to stretch it for another day. Hopefully tomorrow I'll get it. Okay. I'm going to have to do what I can do. Please consider sowing a financial seed. Also sign up for our spiritual warfare strategic prayer network. All you have to lose is demons, curses, and witchcraft. Okay. Let me break one more thing here. I now break all witchcraft, voodoo, black magic, hexes, vexes, word, curse, and evil, I envy, jealousy of all of us here. Our members and their family members and their pets, myself, my descendants, all my family members, amen, and my ministry partners, amen. All right, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord makes his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance uh, towards you and give you peace. God bless you now. Where can you sign up? BrotherCarlos.com. The website is right there below network, right there. BrotherCarlos.com. The link is also listed below in the video on YouTube, okay? Amen. Help us out, folks. Donate something. Help us out, please. God bless you now. And join our network, amen? Go to brothercarlos.com to learn more about it. God bless you now. Bye.